the God and never fail. Hallelujah. Whatever God word said, do it. That's yes. It find your way on the way trying to do it and then God has reached down his hand and helped you to do it. All right then. All right. King uh, King nephew uh, Chattanooga found uh, Daniel, Hananias, Mishael, and Azariah uh, better than uh, ten times better than his uh, magicians and astrologers. Yes. He found them. He did. The king did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, praise God. Because God had given them all wisdom, knowledge, and all of Yes. That. And uh, the king saw that they was ten times better mm -hmm. than what he had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yes. See how great God is. Even though the enemy wanted them to do something out of God's will. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, they didn't do it, and, and the king found them ten times uh, greater than, than uh, uh, his people. Yeah. Amen. So, yes. Amen. Yes. Give God another hand. Give God a hand praise for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just uh, always good. Grateful for associate pastors, Dad and Mom Brian, and their good, godly, sound teaching. For God's word through our Sunday school lessons, along with the godly examples they are to us, that we need so much. We honor and appreciate you, Dad and Mom. Yes, sir. We also honor and appreciate our precious mother, Hunt. Yes, amen. Thank God for her. Faithful amen. Elder Apollos. Amen. Thank God for him, our children's teachers on post, as well as all who participate. We are always better yes. together. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We give special honor and appreciation to the pastor of this house, yes. Missionary Regina Tucker, yes. and our Bishop Roy Tucker. Amen. We thank God for them, as we do. Mm -hmm. And I always say, continue to keep our leaders in your sincere prayer. Yes, sir. Yes. So this part is where we go through the scriptures of the lesson. You will need your Bibles. Our today's lesson is Daniel honors God's law. Amen. Our lesson text is Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 through 21. As is our custom here at Mother Tucker Ministry, let's go back though and recap last week's lesson. If you have your Sunday school book, if not, it's okay. Um, <laughs> In the spirit of diligence, though, right? Amen. It's always good to go back. I don't get everything, and most of us don't get everything in one sitting. Amen. Some, a few people do, but most of us, we don't get it all in one sitting. Amen. <laughs> it's good to go back. Yes. What well, a lesson title last week? Josiah calls the people back to God. Hmm. That was from 2 Kings chapter 22, <coughs> verses 8 through 10. And then it skips to chapter 23, verses 1 through 3, and it goes from verse 21 to 23. <coughs> so I have written down that lesson. Uh, began after a few after a few reigns of ungodly kings of Judah. Yes. <laughs> this Judah was the southern kingdom of Israel. The northern kingdom, of, the northern kingdom, called Israel, had been taken captive by Assyria during Hezekiah's reign of Judah. Hezekiah, who was host Josiah's great grandfather, was the last righteous king before mm -hmm. Josiah. Yes. <laughs> but our lesson, Second Kings, uh, twenty-two. Uh, but I went back to verse 3 last week. <coughs> but we'll, we'll go ahead and start at verse 8. <coughs> because I, I went back to verse 3. Um, well, let, let's go on back to verse 3. It's <coughs> so 2 Kings 22 and verse 3. <coughs> Second Kings 22 verse 3 says King Hosea sent who? 
Shephan, good. Shephan the scribe to the house of the Lord, Jehovah, right? Verse 4 said, <clears throat> saying to go up to who? Hilkiah, who was the uh, he was a high priest, right? <clears throat> that he may that he may do what to the silver? Psalm. Psalm, the silver which is brought into the house of Jehovah. In other words, he, he wanted to make sure, we're going to go on to the lesson now, but they want, he wanted to make sure that the house of God was going to be rebuilt. Yes. So make sure all the money is distributed the way it's supposed to be to the people, the carpenters, and make sure everybody, yes. make sure that part is right. That's what he sent Shapman to Hilkiah to do, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Now to our lesson. So Shapman gets to Hilkiah, uh, mm -hmm. Verse 8 says, Hilkiah, the high priest, uh, mm -hmm. said to Shaphan, I have found what? The book, the book of the law. Yes, that wasn't why Shaphan was sent, though, right? He wasn't, it wasn't nothing about the book of the law. He was sent on business to make sure that everything was going to be built, you know. Yeah. So he gets to Hilkiah, because he was sent to Hilkiah. So when he gets to Hilkiah, Hilkiah drops this bomb on him, right? It's a good bomb. He said, I found the book of the law in the house of Jehovah, right? Yes. What did Hilkiah do? Gave the book to Shaphan. What did Shaphan do? Read it. This is the law. This is God's law. This is the Mosaic law, right? This, this is what made Israel a holy people. Uh huh. Yes. Was the law. Oh, Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6, right? So, verse 9 says, um, Shaphan, the scribe, came to who? The king. He came to the king, and he brought the king word again. And said, Thy servants have done what? Gathered the money. Gathered the money that was found where? In the house. In the house and, and have done what? Delivered it. Delivered it into the hand of who? Them that do the work. That have the what? Oversight. Oversight of the house of Jehovah. Right? Anytime you see the word Lord in all caps, that's translated from the word Jehovah. That's the word Jehovah. Uh, but I made the point last week in verse 9, I, I appreciated the fact that the king told Shaphan to go to Hilkiah about the money. Yes. So when Shaphan came back to the king, he, the first of all, even though he had this great news that they found the book of the law, uh -huh. first thing he did was made sure that the king knew that he did what he was told to do. Yes, yes. I, I appreciated that part, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't say nothing about the book of the law first. He didn't get spiritual first. No. He didn't get spiritual first. He did what he, I did what you told me to do. And the other one, yeah, that settled a lot of animals, a lot of temples, Everything, I done done, but you now to bring in. Now we gonna bring in the bomb, right? <laughs> but first, I want you to know that I did what I was obedient. Mm -hmm. I didn't offer a sacrifice first. I was obedient yes. first, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So say fine, verse ten. Then say fine, mm -hmm. the scribe showed the king, saying. Hilkiah the priest did what? Delivered, Delivered me a book. Mm -hmm. And Shaphan did what before the king? Read. He read it. Yes. Shaphan read it before the king. Yes. Uh, verses 10 and 11. Uh, it, it says, Shaphan showed the king the book. Uh, mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the book of the law, what did he do? The king rent his clothes. Yes. Woo. Mm -hmm. 
the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Achan the son of Shaphan, and uh, Akbar the son of Micaiah, mm -hmm. and Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah the servant of the, of the king, saying, verse 13, uh, go inquire of who? The Lord. the Lord for me, the whole for me, and for the people, and for all Judah concerning what? The words, the words of the book that is found. He said, for great is the what? Wrath of Jehovah that is kindled against who? Against us, because of us. Because of what we did. No, because of what our fathers did. Because of what our ancestors did, right? God has hired us because of what our ancestors did. Make this point quite a bit. We, we really can't we really can't separate ourselves from our ancestors, right? It, it, the Bible don't do it. This is the only culture that seems to do it, but it's not it's not scriptural. We, we have the responsibility, like I said, you know, I can leave my children in a bad situation by what I do. Yes, sir. By what I do, right? They have to fix it. I'm gone. They got to fix it. They got to fix what I left them. That's right. <laughs> so there is some responsibility even while you live. It's not rocket science to me. It's not rocket science, right? You have to take responsibility well, you know, it's, it's just because we we could, we definitely take the benefits. They need you a million dollars, boy. You thank God, thank God for my parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> well, I go both ways. It's not deep. It's not deep. Anyway, so so it says he said the wrath of Jehovah is kindled against us yes. because. Our fathers did what? They did hearken unto the words of this book. He said, "We got the book, man. We got the." The David said, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path." We got the light, my man. Got the light. Yeah, we got the. We got the book. They had error by not knowing. But now I got the light. I can see where I'm going. We can. Wow. He was a son. The king was encouraged, right? He, he was also taking responsibility. Yes. But he was a king. Yes. You know? He didn't shuck responsibility, though. He said, Our fathers have not hearkened to the words of this book to do according to all that is written. Uh, so, all right, we, we're going we're gonna to jump on to, and, and the king ordered a whole bunch of things to be done, right? He, he ordered a whole bunch of stuff. But um, uh, he, he, said to, he said to inquire, he told him, he, he, he sent some people to inquire of Jehovah. Um, and they went to the prophets who hold them. But he said to inquire, I just want to say this, he said to inquire, verse 13, for us, for all of us, basically, what can we do? Right? Is there anything? We're in this mess. God has hollered us. So ask, go inquire. Is there anything that we can do in the meantime? Right? Is there anything we can do? I, I thought that was good also. All right, we're going to jump on to our lesson again. Uh, it picks back up in verse 21. And now I, I'll just say that Huldo, the whole though, the prophetess, told the king <coughs> that <laughs> she said, listen. The word of God is Judah will be uh, punished, right? Yes. They will have to go through. But she told the king, but because you rent your clothes, yes. because your heart was tender, yes. because you didn't just ignore what God mm -hmm. said, Amen. because you had a heart to do what he said, yes. she said, you won't see it. She said, you won't see, you will rest in peace. Your reign will be in peace. Yes. That's what she told him. She said, because your heart, yes. whoo, Amen. my God, you didn't ignore what God said. Amen. All right. 
That was the word that, that, that was sent back to the king. All right, now, and then the king made all these changes, you know. Okay, so, we're going to go on to verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 1 of our lesson. So the king gathered unto him who? All the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of Jehovah, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both what? Small and great. Who read? The king read, right? He read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found, right? The king read. If the king was convicted, jo Josiah, King Josiah was convicted. Amen. The king stood by a pillar, verse 3, and made a what before you over? He made a covenant to do what? To walk after Jehovah. Now, to walk after Jehovah and to do what? Keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with what? All their hearts and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written where? In this book. And they, they said in the book that when it said keep his commandments, testimonies, and statutes, they, they was like they, they couldn't really find any definite distinction between the words, but the point was they were going to keep all of the law. Right? They were going to keep everything that God said. In verse 3 says, and, the, and all the people stood by, uh, stood to the covenant. Mm -hmm. and, okay, this is when Josiah started just destroying everything that, that was all the idols, right? Uh, verse 21, skips on to verse 21. The king commanded the people, saying, Do what? Keep the Passover. Now, they had done this. Mm -hmm. This was part of what God had told them to do, right? This was like Mother explained last week. This was, the Passover was just reminding them what God had done when he delivered them out of Egypt. Amen. It, it was an important thing that God had told them they should do forever, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So now they were, they were able to do this again. It's in the book. Yes. So it said, keep the Passover unto Jehovah. Who's God? Your God. Your God. As, it, as it is what? Written. Written. Written in the book. Written in this book. Written in the book of this covenant. Verse 22. Surely there was not there was not holding such a what? Passover from the days of who? Judges. Judges that judge Israel, nor in all the days of the kings, kings of Israel, nor in the days, nor the kings, kings of Judah. But in the but in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein what was holding? Passover. The Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem. Good stuff. Josiah called the people back to God. Uh, yes. uh, we're going to go into our lesson today. Don, Daniel honors God's law. Uh, this was this wasn't too far. This wasn't very long after uh, Josiah. But I, you know, it's very interesting. God, Josiah called the people back to God. The only way you can call people back to God is calling them back to His Word. Yeah. This is how we go back to God is back to His Word, right? All right. <clears throat> So our lesson today, Daniel honors God's law. This here is a, a lesson text of Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 through 21. So now, I have written down our lesson again, Daniel 1 and 8, but we need to go back to verse 3 to get some context here. So grab your Bibles and uh, go to Daniel 1. We're going to start at verse 3. Daniel honors God's law. So Daniel 1 and 3 says, And the king, the king was Jehoiakim, right? The king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the who? 
children of Israel and of the king's seed, king which would be like the uh, uh, royal descendants, right? Royal descendants. And who else? And of the princes. They had the other versions say the ruling class of the Israelites that were captive in Babylon. Right? They were captive in Babylon. Verse 4, now this is this is what the king told Ashpenaz to do, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 4, children un, in whom there was no what? Blemish. Blemish, but but what? Favor. Well favor. And yeah. skillful in what? Wisdom. Oh. All wisdom and Knowledge. cunning in what? Knowledge. Knowledge and understanding. Understanding <laughs> science. Mm -hmm. And such as had ability and them to stand where? In the king's palace. In the king's palace. These are people who uh, the king wanted to bring to him, right? Yes. Ooh. It says, and them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might do what? Teach, Teach, the, learning. Teach the learning and the tongue, tongue of Chaldeans. <laughs> and what this was really saying is people who they could teach the culture. Mm -hmm. Really what they're saying, right? Mm -hmm. I think Apollos made it said that earlier. Mm -hmm. But they really teach them the culture mm -hmm. of the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. The Chaldeans were the inhabitants of Babylon. Yes. Like I said, a lot of times in the Bible they, they distinguish you <laughs> by um, your ancestry. Yes. Or where you lived at. And this is the case where they did both of them. Chaldeans were descendants of Kazaz, uh, K K K K I can't remember the Kazaz, Kaz, something like that. Uh, but they were descendants. When it says Chaldeans, it's talking about a family, descendants. Mm -hmm. But this family lived in Babylon. Amen. But they also went by Babylonians. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like Judea or Jews talking about people who lived in the southern kingdom of Judah. Yes. Distinguished them by, by where they lived at. Right? Amen. The southern kingdom, right? Because they could have been Benjamites or they could have been other tribes, but they still called them Judeans because of where they lived at. Yeah, right? Sure. So so the Chaldeans were the people who lived in Babylon. So when they're talking about Chaldeans or Babylon, they're talking about the same people. So, so he wanted to teach them, he wanted to bring to him, bring to the king, pick people of the captives of Judah, who uh, they want to teach them the learning and the tongue or literature and the language of the Chaldeans, Amen. basically their culture. Um, verse five, and the king, now listen, the king appointed them a what? Now he's talking about these people, these young men that was brought to him, right? Mm -hmm. The one they just described in verses three and four. He said he appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, right? This is what the king ate. Mm -hmm. And of, of what? Wow. Wine did he drink, mm -hmm. so nourished them for how long? Mm -hmm. Three years, that at the end, they might, they, that they might do what? So I see this as kind of like a program, right? This is a program. Three years, three years long. We're gonna get them in this, we're gonna get them nourished. This is what they think, we're gonna get them nourished, right? Mm -hmm. So they can stand before the king. Mm -hmm. Now, among these, among all of these people that was brought, were the children of who? Judah. Judah. And they said Daniel, right? Mm -hmm. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. unto, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. Yes. He gave names, uh, Daniel the name Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, unto Hananiah, Shadrach, and Michelle, Michelle, and that's why I've been here. Okay, now to our lesson. All right, so so that was good. So, so I wanted to talk, I wanted to just touch on that, uh, so so we can see what they were instructed to do. Verse eight. But 
Daniel purposed where? In his heart. In his heart that he would not, what? Defile himself with what? Portion of the king's meat. Like Mother said, they explained in the book, and it was a really good point, that more than likely, the reason that it would defile himself or Daniel was because more than likely it was meat that was offered to another god. And they were clearly instructed not to eat those things that was offered to other gods. Amen. So that would be defiling himself. Yeah. He could eat it. He could eat it. And, and I make this point, you know, this culture, we don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> we tell, tell you not to eat something you like, boy, you get a problem. I'm talking about saints. They get a problem with it. Amen. You tell, you tell, you tell us not to eat something that we like it. Okay. Oh man, boy, we said, oh man, we just bless it, just bless it and eat it, right? <laughs> but, but, but this right here is just some cultural discipline, right? Yes, it is. A little self control, right? Yes. Eating to live, not living to eat. Oh, amen. Mm. <laughs> amen. That's true. That's what this culture does. We live to eat. <laughs> and I'm saying that, Reed. I'm not, I'm not being funny. This is serious, right? We live to eat, and it's killing us. And then we go get medicine. That's a whole other conversation. But what do we God told us, you know, what to do. But Daniel said, I will not defile myself. Right. Amen. Now, this, this was a spiritual thing, but, but there were certain things that God told them not to eat, period. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I don't get on all that. But, but, but just the whole thing that Daniel didn't just say, well, I'm just going to bless it. You know, and God, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. We, we, we got to take a little more responsibility yes. in our body. Oh, what do we eat? This is really something. Come on, man. We're, we're dropping. We're dropping. Too many of us are dropping too soon. Too many of us are dropping way too soon. Yes, yes. Too many people of God are dropping Amen. way too soon. Amen. My heart goes out. All right. But Daniel said he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat or with what? <laughs> with the wine which he drank, right? Therefore, Daniel made a request. He, re he requested to whom? The prince of the eunuchs, of the, of the man who was over all of them, right? right. That he might not what? Yes. Defile himself. Daniel was taking a stand. Yes. Now, now that they didn't have freedom of speech back then. This was a kingdom. Amen. They didn't have freedom of speech. It was actually risky to take a stand. But verse 9 said. But God had brought Daniel into what? Amen. Favor and what? Yes. Tender love with who? Yes. The prince of the eunuchs, right? Wow. Verse 10 says, And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I what? Fear my Lord. Fear my Lord who? He's not talking about God. He I fear this king, Nebuchadnezzar, right? There you go. This dude was a goof. Well, he was... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he had the power to do it. He had the power just by his word. All he had to do was, all he didn't have to say that. All he got to do was just, you know, <laughs> they, all he had to do was make a gesture and they knew what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a black hat on. Yeah. I fear the Lord, my king, who has appointed um, what? Your meat. Your meat and your drink. Amen. He's saying, for why should he see what? Your face. Your face yeah. is liking liking than the children which are of your sort. Thank you, Mother. Then you shall make me what? And then you what? My head to the king. You put me in you you put I understand you feeling that you you put me at risk, right? Yeah, yeah. Big time. First eleven. 
Then said Daniel, Daniel responded to Melzar, mm -hmm. whom, who had set over them? Prison. So this guy, this guy was talking to him, so evidently the guy said something to Daniel, Daniel responded to a different person, right? Okay. Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over them, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 12, Daniel says, this is powerful. Yes. Daniel says, do what to thy servant? Prove, Prove thy servant. He said, I, I beseech you. How long? Ten days. Ten days. Let them give us what? Pulse to eat. What is pulse? Vegetables. Vegetables. Vegetables, right? No meat. Let them give us pulse to eat and what to drink? Water. Water to drink. Not Kool-Aid, not tank, none of that stuff. Water to drink, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let them give us pulse, which is vegetables. Listen, I'm convinced that our bodies are designed to eat vegetables. I'm convinced, right? There's a lot of research. I'm just convinced that we're not designed to eat vegetables. You know, God, well, we can. We can, but, you know, I don't talk about that. But I'll say this, though. Usually people, when they have high blood pressure and all that stuff, when they start eating vegetables, it's amazing how that goes away. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. It's amazing how that stuff just goes away. Mm -hmm. Just, just something to chew on. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Even though, and I'm still, you know, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm still, I don't bring, I don't bring what is right down to where I am. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still working on that, but I'm still convinced that that is true. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not going to just make okay because I like it, and I'm going to defend what I like. No, that's what, that's what, that's what, all right. Anyway. <laughs> But well, let them give us pulse and water or vegetables and water. So, so let, let's try this out. Right? I hear what you're saying. He's saying I hear what I hear what the I hear what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So just do this. Give us ten days. All right, man. Give us vegetables and water to drink. Mm -hmm. And then verse 13 says, Then let what be looked upon. Our countenance be looked upon before who? Thee and the countenance of who? The church that eat portion oh, yeah. of the king's meat. And he said, Who sees? Thou sees. And do what? In other words, whatever you think, you just take a look. Just look at it. Just look at it. Give us 10 days. Give us vegetables and water. Let them eat what they eat. You make a decision. You do whatever you say, right? But Daniel knew. He knew that God was not going to allow him Amen. to eat the idol, to Jesus. eat food of yeah, idol, right. off the idol. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. So, the uh, Melzar, Melzar did what? He consented, he consented to him. He agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, he agreed with, with, with what he said and proved him for how long? Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. At the end of the ten days, their countenance appeared what? Fairer. 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 But not only that, what? Fatter in flesh. Fatter in flesh. Then who? <laughs> All the children which did eat meat, basically. Portion of the king's meat. Verse 16. Thus Melchior took away what? <laughs> the portion of their meat and the what? Wine. Wine that they should drink and gave them what? Oh. Gave them pulse of vegetables. <laughs> My God. God did a work, right? This was a divine, this was a divine thing. Yes. This was awesome, but it's also good for your body, but it's a divine. It, it, it's all one, really. It, it's, we are divine people. We are we, we serve a divine God, you know, so it all works for us. But obedience is in there too. We have to okay. There's a responsibility, right? But we are what we eat. Amen. And drink. Amen. Uh, verse 17. <laughs> As for these that now the Melzar took away the portion of the king and gave them uh, gave them pulse, right? Verse 17. As for these four children, God, God gave them what? Knowledge, Knowledge and skill and what? Learning. 
in all learning, right? And wisdom. But Daniel had something extra. Daniel had an understanding in what? All visions and dreams. You know, we, we are better together, right? Some people are gifted in certain areas, some people are not, right? You should never despise nobody because they're not gifted. Well, you're gifted at. Uh, scripture says, what do you have that you did not receive? <laughs> Name one thing that you have that you did not receive. And if you receive this, the Bible says, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? Amen. 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 You gotta get that. So what we have is what we receive. Yes. We Amen. received it by genetics or somebody gave us input or God gave us. What everything we got is what we receive. We don't have nothing we didn't receive. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. But 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 so so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, no, no, I can't remember the Hebrew name. Uh, but they, they they didn't have the gift that Daniel had, right? They may have had some gifts that Daniel didn't have, right? I believe they mentioned this because of what Daniel is going to do later on. Yeah. But I, but we, we are better together. Verse eighteen. Now at the end of the days that the king said he should bring them in. The prince of the eunuchs brought the men before who? Nebuchadnezzar the king. The king did what with them? Communed with them. They hung out, right? They fellowship. And among them was found none like who? Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they did what? They stood before the king. You gotta get out of here. And all, I got something I have written down to read, but you know. And all the matters, in all the matters of what? Yes. Wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, that the king inquired of them. <laughs> I think somebody said in a book, or somebody said something like, if the king was inquired, if they had all this wisdom and understanding and the king was inquiring, yeah. he had to be pretty sharp too, right? Amazing. For him to be inquiring of them, he, I'm, you know, this is just, he must have been pretty sharp himself, Nebuchadnezzar. He found them how many times better? Ten times better than who? All the magicians and astrologers that were in all this realm. Magicians and astrologers don't really mean the same thing as they do in our culture, but it was kind of close. But he found them, they just, they were some sharp people, right? But they had their faith in Jehovah. Yes. They had a bold confidence. Yes. Uh, like Mother said, they even had their names changed. <laughs> and and they, they were taught the, the, the culture of the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. But I have a note. Uh, but they had their own culture first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and this is, I'm going to always you know, make this point. They had their own culture first. Yes. They had their own name. They had their own culture. Mm -hmm. So them taking on other names wouldn't have made much difference because they knew. Yeah. Kind of like that movie, that movie Roots when they told Kunta, your name is Toby. I mean, your name is Toby. And Kunta was his name. Right? That was who he was. Uh -huh. I always make the point, you wouldn't have had to hit me twice. <laughs> you wouldn't have hit me twice. Hey, man. Come on, man. Right, you know, whatever you say my name is, isn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> it's different, right? So so they knew who they were. So this was just something they had to do. It wasn't a big deal, but it was different over here when it comes to us. I'll make that clear. You know. it's different. I don't want nobody trying to make, you know, take it there. Uh, but, so the king found in these men, they were ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Daniel continued even unto when? First, first year of King Cyrus. We're going to, like Dad said, we're going to talk about Daniel some more. It's the good stuff. The good stuff. Daniel honors God's law. Daniel took a stand for what God said, for what he knew God said. Yeah. I don't care what was going on around him. He, he took a stand for what was in this book. Yes. King Mosiah, when he found out what was in this book, yes. he took a stand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Woo. 
Yeah. That's just best. It's best to still get down to it. Mom, Dad, you got that close? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our lives, Father. We thank you. Give us the grace to honor your word. Yes. We thank you for giving us the grace to honor in your law. All, all of them, God. We thank you. Thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our lives. You're doing the work. Yes, you are. David said, thy word is a lamp unto yes. my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. Thank you for lighting our path. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you're doing by your spirit in our lives. Father, we're constantly praying for the sick and the shut in. We thank you for what you're doing in the bodies of your people. <laughs> by Jesus, your sure as Christ, we are healed. God, we thank you for the work that you're doing in the bodies of your people right now. By your spirit, for your glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the words coming forth. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives for your glory. God, we'll thank you forever. In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank the Lord for Ella Robin, and we appreciate him. Hallelujah. And he renew us. This time we're going to lift our Sunday school offering. <laughs>